the Holy Ghost that keeps you. And I want to give honor to our wonderful pastor, the shepherds of the household, who is worthy of double honor. And I'm so glad to have her in my life. Because she said something that spoke something into my spirit so strong last night that it allowed me to go back into my word and hear something from God. Sometimes you need to hear something from your pastor or even the spirit of God to get you back in place. So come on, somebody. Don't you know that? Come on, somebody praise the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, I know that God is on my side. I don't know about you, but I know God is on my side because I have made a decision a long time ago that I am ready, I am determined, I am set, I am put in a position that I will never, ever leave him. And if God gives me the strength, I will say how much I love him. Every chance I get, I will give God a praise. I don't need no one to pump me up. I don't need no one to tell me how to do it. Because I have my own individual relationship with God. How about you? Somebody have a relationship in here? I tell you to give God a praise. Because sometimes you need to get out of self and start looking at what he has done for you. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of God up here. It's making my bones start to shake. My knees are clapping. I can't. If you only knew how the presence of God could take you over, then there will be something that God can do with you. But because you refuse to allow God to take over, there are certain things that God cannot perform in your life. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Now, when she gave me a word, she says to me, when I got home, how my body was so beaten down and I was exhausted, she told me, don't give up. That the darkest time is right before dawn. That there is something that's about to happen in my life and I took that word and I ran with it. And I know that I heard something from God that was given directly to me. Somebody say directly to me. Directly to me. Come on, somebody act like you're on the church. Say directly to me. Directly to me. I need to hear. I need to hear. A word from you. A word from you. Listen, we're not going to take a long time. I want everyone that has a Bible. Please go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. We're going to dig into this word real quick because I have a message that I believe is from God. And I know it's from God. And there's something that I'm going to say, and I'm going to speak a twofold message. I'm going to speak a message to the church, and I'm going to speak a message to the hypocrites. All right. Amen. And to those that don't have it. All right. This is a twofold message. And I want you to take it any which way you want to take it, but there's something that I'm trying to speak to the church about. All right. I'm talking about the true church. How many are part of the true church of God? If you are the true church of God, won't you just give God another hand praise? You know what I'm saying? I can't get the two people to get really in tune and in serious about what God has in store for you. Everybody has it? Yes. If you have it, say amen. Amen. And we're going to start at the first verse and we're going to read down to the ninth verse. What chapter? Three. First Samuel. Chapter 3, first verse to the ninth verse. And if my wife would be so kind, if you don't mind reading that for me, I truly appreciate that. Thank you. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious. So let me say precious. Precious. Go on. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. And Aaron the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I. For thou callest me. And he said, I call not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. 
And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Hold on. He did not know the Lord. He did not know the Lord. Yet, that's the key word. Continue. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I. These three times, go ahead. For thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be. If he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak. Hold on. Speak. Somebody needs to sometimes say, Speak to my heart, Lord. You have to ask God to speak to you sometimes. Continue. Lord, for thy shall, therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, and thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Amen, the word of the Lord is blessed. I want to entitle this message as, Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Is your reception on point? Can you hear God now? Now I look up the name of Samuel, and in the Hebrew interpretation, it's heard of God or God has heard. Of now it says in verse one that the word of God was precious. Somebody say precious. Precious. Now precious means high price, of great value, highly esteemed, and delicate. A lot of us have lost that meaning in your life of how precious God really is. How precious this word is really supposed to be activated in your life. How precious that your walk and your communication and your relationship is with God. So you lost that first love, which was God, and now you're wondering, why am I going through so much? Why am I going through these type of situations, these type of obstacles, these different types of, uh, uh, what would I say, um, uh, oppressions of life, and you try to find out, why have you lost your oomph? Why have you lost your fire? And then it reads down and says that in those days, there were no vision. And that means that you had a lack of vision. That the word of God was not there to everybody the way it was to sin. And the act, and see, this is what one thing we have to do. See, the power, see, see the word is very, very, very um, profound. He said, my people perish for a what? My People perish for what? Am I speaking to myself? My people perish for what? Lack of knowledge. You're lacking. And you're wondering why you're going through these different things and you're wondering why you can't seem to get over this little hump in life. And why you don't have because you are lacking something from God. You are not allowing the word to be precious in your life anymore. And because of that, you have lost your vision. Come on, somebody, give God a praise. Come on, somebody, give God a praise. Because your lack is on your preciousness of how your vision was. You used to have a lot of vision. You lost your vision. You lost what you once had. And that's why you're wondering why you're going through so much. And in that time, Samuel did not know God like we know God. God is an open.
open and available unto us. Samuel was called at the age of 13, and all he did was stay in the presence of God. And as you read there, he said that he was in his temple. Everybody is going everywhere else except for the temple of God. 